Hey guys, we're here again. It's Jacob and Andrew. We're gonna be doing kettlebell swing slash snatch. So we're gonna work on how to improve your kettlebell snatch, but in order to do that, we're gonna actually improve your kettlebell swing in order to do that. Cool, well, let's get rolling. You got some good drills planned for us? Real drills and tips to help you guys out. Let's start. So we're here with our first drill on improving your kettlebell swing, which will then in turn help your kettlebell snatch. One of the drills I like to do is to make sure that our athletes establish a very good hinge position. So what this is is very simple. I have Jake standing about a foot, foot and a half off the wall, and we're gonna make sure that he knows how to hinge his hips back. So what I'm gonna have him do is try to touch his butt to the wall without moving his feet. So if you guys can see this as I zoom in and I have him go, he's gonna sit back with his butt, touch his butt to the wall, notice how the shins stay vertical, there's his hinge and he comes back up to standing and squeezes his butt. Now, if he were to do this wrong and squat forward, just do a normal squat, his butt never touches the wall and you can notice the knees push forward into that squatty type position. So he's gonna stand back up, reestablish himself and he's gonna wait and try to get the weight back into his heels as he shifts back one more time, touching his butt to the wall and then standing up aggressively and squeezing quads and butt. Let's do one more rep jig but back and hard and aggressive, boom. So that is your, your basic hinge drill against the wall just to make sure that you guys have the correct movement pattern for our kettlebell swing and kettlebell snatch. Moving on then from the hinge position, once you've established a good hinge against the wall, you can now move into a kettlebell deadlift. And what I'm gonna have Jake do is step forward so the kettlebell's right between his feet, right? And he's gonna pick up the kettlebell just the same way as he hinged against the floor or against the wall. And what we're trying to do is find that same movement pattern that we just established. So he's gonna bring the hips back, the weight's gonna be right over the middle of the foot to the ankle, and then standing back up. So we're looking for shins to stay vertical, hips coming back, and then a nice neutral spine as he stands up. So the basic kettlebell deadlift is just the beginning point into our next movement that we're gonna do, which is the kettlebell swing. Next drill we're gonna work on is then moving into the kettlebell swing. So we've established the deadlift. Now we're gonna get a little bit more powerful and dynamic with it. And we're gonna use that same hinge pattern to do our kettlebell swing. Jake's gonna step back about a foot away from the kettlebell. So he has to reach for his kettlebell, right? And he's in his nice hinge, posi hinge position. You can see the shins vertical. And he's gonna hike back hard and then drive his feet through the ground and stand up hard just like our normal deadlift and just let the kettlebell float. This is our Russian swing. So we're just going to chest level. Couple of keys to this is we wanna make sure that we're not lifting the kettlebell right now, right? We're using the backside to do that, okay? And we're not trying to let the bell get too below the knee. So what I give for a lot of athletes on the cue is forearms to the inner thigh. So the same movement pattern has been established against the wall, into the deadlift, and now into the Russian kettlebell swing. The next drill we're gonna work on is from the kettlebell swing is gonna be into a kettlebell high pull. This is like that transition period before you guys turn over your bell into your kettlebell snatch. We just did the two-handed swing. We're gonna take one hand away from that and we're gonna go into that high pull. So what I want Jake to do is same setup as his swing that we just established. He's gonna hike back, stand up, and he's gonna think about elbowing a giant behind him. He's gonna to try to get his elbow up high and back as he extends and squeezes his butt and quads at the top. So he's gonna hike, stand up, high pull up and high, right? So elbows nice high and back. We talk about the hinge position the whole time, right? He's gonna continue on here. So the hips are still coming back, right? Elbows nice and high, very good position in the bottom, almost like a deadlift. The shins are staying vertical. We're standing up, squeezing our butt, squeezing our quads. And another cue I give for this all the time, guys, is I should see the bottom of the bell as he swings at the top, right? So that it's not facing the floor. That lets me know I'm ready to turn the bell over into the snatch. So now we've just done the transition drill into that high pull, we're now gonna finish off this entire thing with the actual kettlebell snatch. So once you've established that high pull, you're just gonna do a punch through that bell as hard as you can, so it doesn't smoke you in the wrist and just slides on like a glove. So the setup is exactly the same for Jake here. As his hips are back, he's gonna hike, stand up hard, and then he's gonna punch right through that high pull so it's up overhead into his kettlebell snatch. Go ahead, Jake. Boom, right there. Now we're looking for a fast transition. So you can see the elbow punch, I call it. So the elbow's high, there's the high pull. And then as hard and aggressive as he can, he's going to slide that hand right through the top. So he's got a nice overhead position and you open your hand to almost spear the kettlebell. So that is your kettlebell snatch 
A couple of the things, guys, that will really help your kettlebell snatch when we talk about it is, one, grip. Um, grip strength plays a big part of this, but how you hold the kettlebell also does. We don't want to death grip the kettlebell. A lot of that friction can definitely tear your hands up. So what I'm going to have Jake do is actually work on just holding the kettlebell with a fingertip grip. So he's going to show you guys what that looks like. He's going to do a snatch for me. So there's his kettlebell snatch. And he's going to come down, right, into his bottom position. I just want him to turn this so you guys can see this. So if he turns his hands, right, he doesn't have a death grip on the kettlebell. It's more of a fingertip. So let's restart it again, Jake. All right. And when he does multiple reps, you can kind of see as he goes up into the top position, right, you can see the fingers open up and then they'll come right back into that fingertip grip as his hips sit back. A lot of this is timing as he's going to do about three more for me is we want to wait for the hips uh, to move back until the kettlebell is there. So we're kind of playing chicken with ourselves and letting the kettlebell come down and pull the hips back instead of being too early and then we make the mistake of getting too low on our kettlebell snatch. Another concept too guys that comes into play here, especially for some of you newbies that might not be uh, as um, experienced with the kettlebell snatch, is dropping it to the shoulder before your next repetition. So what I'm going to have Jake do is snatch the kettlebell, he's going to bring it back to the shoulder, and then that gives him an ability to now control the next repetition by pushing away and allowing for more momentum in the swing uh, bottom portion of that, of that lift here. So bringing it to the shoulder allows you to control it a little bit better. It gives you guys not so much acceleration on the way down from the top position and it allows you guys to do a lot more repetitions in a row for some of you guys that might be a little bit newer and wanting to control that momentum downward. So another great option for you guys is to go to the shoulder, right, reestablish your hinge and drive your feet back to the ground. So one of the ways, guys, we can improve your kettlebell swing and snatch is to improve our power output and also timing, which I spoke on earlier, of waiting for your hips, right? We want to be patient and let the bell pull your hips back. If you have a partner, one of the ways you can do this is what I call an accelerated eccentric swing, and in which case I'm going to accelerate the downward force of the kettlebell. So when Jake does a couple of swings, we're just going to have him do like two in a row. After his second one, I'm going to push the bell back at him. So it's going to speed that downward position up. And now he has to react faster to the up. So he's going to start with just two regular swings. Russian swings. We're just going to the chest. One, two. Now in this one, I'm going to push back. Hard down. So now he has to react faster, right? Because it's coming down faster. And he has to be patient. And it's allowing him now to get a bigger stretch shorten cycle out of the swing which is in turn going to allow him to get more power so you do about five to ten reps at, at a moderate weight with someone pushing on you give a little power output on that out, uh, on that swing so for those of you that may not have a partner to do that accelerated eccentric swing what you can do now is perform a banded kettlebell swing right so i have a, a normal size kettlebell moderate weight for jake here and then a, a moderate size band we use a purple band for this He's going to thread it through the bottom and then thread it through itself so that it kind of bands to the kettlebell at the top. Spread the, the band across so he's got room for his hands on the handle. And he's going to stand so that the band is wrapped around the outside of the foot. And what this does now is have banded tension on the way down. So obviously the band's greatest tension is at the top of the swing, which means it's going to want to pull the, the kettlebell down fast, just like I did with my hand as a ancillary center swing. I'm going to have Jake perform six to, to eight good repetitions here. Same start position, hand, stand up. He's trying to squeeze his butt, squeeze his quads, drive his heels and feet in the ground. Number one common thing I see with kettlebell swings is people get up on the toes. They try to get squatty with it, right? We're trying to make sure we recruit this backside muscle group and the band is pulling back down harder as he stands up as hard as he can to react to that. So this is the banded kettlebell swing. And also guys, a couple of other ways you can affect your kettlebell swing and overall range and make yourself a little bit more uh, dynamic in this is you can do something called uh, offset swings. So what I have here is two different sizes for Jake to swing and we're working on keeping the hips from rotating around. We want everything to stay straight, right? It's kind of like your normal deadlift. You don't want to have one side pulling down over the other. So what he's going to perform is just five single or <coughs> five offset kettlebell swings, set them down, and then switch which hand has the heavier belt. I'm looking for the bells to stay at the same level, right? And for him to continue to use his hinge position, stand up, squeeze his butt, squeeze his quads, and drive his heels in the ground. So go ahead, Jake. Five offset kettlebell swings. Just stand up, hard squeeze, 
right? He comes down with the bells. It's that tight inhale position, just like the bottom of your deadlift. He drives his feet back to the ground, sets him down. He's gonna switch him out. And he's gonna do the same thing. So now the heavier bell is on the opposite side. We're trying to keep the bells as level as we can as we stand up to the ground. Really good drill just to focus on making sure that we're level across the hip throughout. So this is the offset kettlebell swing. What? That was really hard, switching arms. Yeah. The first one just feels yeah. like that. Right. Uh. That was the video on how to improve your kettlebell snatch through improving your kettlebell swing. Uh, we talked about you know improving your hinge position on the wall with the, just a simple, simple hinge drill and how that translates into then your kettlebell simple deadlift and how that translates into the swing. The swing translates into the swing high pull and then we finished with the snatch and showed you guys a bunch of different drills on how to improve your overall uh, swing snatch positions, right? A couple of things that also affect this is we talked about grip strength. Continue on with the farmer carries, heavy bells, walking around. Grip strength really helps you guys out on the, on the kettlebell snatch and swings. Timing is a big one. We talked about not being too fast with the hips, waiting for the bell to come down. Like I talked about, forearm inside the thigh, right, so that our bell doesn't swing too low to the floor and we get pulled out of position. Uh, and then also making sure that we're driving the feet down. I see the, the, the heels pop up way too often on kettlebell swings. We want to drive the feet in the ground and not get pulled up on our toes. So lots of points of performance there on your swings, which affect your snatches. So take those with you guys as uh, you move forward into your kettlebell stuff. So, we did kettlebell swings, help your kettlebell snatches out. Brought to you by Andrew. If you got some ideas for the next week, for the next following weeks, we're gonna do, try to do one every week. If they go over really well, we might do two every week. If you got some cool ideas, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.